Welcome back to this week's episode of Overworked Admin here on our PowerShell tutorial series. Uh, this is part 7 of 14, so we're halfway through. <clears throat> and uh, we got into some logic statements last week or uh, the week before through the holidays uh, using the if, the if operator. And what you're looking at on the screen uh, might be a little bit scary. Uh, everything should look pretty familiar to you up until line 4. Uh, but there's there's some more statements after line four, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and we're going to talk about um, some of the more advanced features in uh, the PowerShell if kind of family of statements, because if you you understand how if if statements work and if and if else and else what we'll be looking at this week, then you will really have uh, a solid understanding of the whole complete block type there. And this is one of the main conditional operators that you'll use when you're creating scripts or let's say you progress on and you're learning other programming languages. The, the if statement is a, is a constant through almost every single programming language. So understanding how to use it is pretty important. So if we remember from our, our last video, we were looking at certain services and we wanted to kind of see if they were running and then respond to the conditions as they were running. So if you remember when we, we ran our program here, we get what we expect because in our case on my uh, test server here, the print spooler service as we saw last week is, is actually running. So what would we do if the print spooler service was not running? So let's go up to services, do a little quick review. Wait for that to fire up. And scroll down and it should be under print spooler and let's stop that and so now let's get this out of the way if we run it again we'll see that the service is stopped so thinking of if if else and you can actually have multiple if else uh, statements here um, you could actually do something like this um, and then do an else statement down here if you so chose, um, you can you can actually do if else statement many if else statements. It's worth noting that um, this is really a way to segment logical choices that you may have. So how could we think about this in real life, right? Let's always try to relate it back to something we're familiar with. If we were driving our car, we could say if the light equals red, stop, right? Else if the light equals yellow, slow down and stop if it's safe. Um, some people might say yellow means speed up, but uh, <laughs> maybe not. And then else, the final condition, because there's three specific possibilities in a United States stoplight, uh, would be green. So it's what you're left with. So we have red would be the first if, we would have yellow is our else if, and then we would have the green light being our final else. It's kind of our catch-all. And, and really, um, if what we're testing here is for very specific conditions. So we have to know when working with our systems what the conditions that our processes and services may be. So in our particular case, we know that the print spooler can either be started or stopped. I mean, and those are, and there's like some in-between services. It could be starting or it could be stopping. Um, but I'm actually gonna start this again. <clears throat> but for a uh, general case, your service will either be stopped or started, and that's what you care about. So if you have a database, you know you probably want it to be started. Um, if you have some other critical services, you probably want them to be started. So what we want to do is we want to just kind of illustrate this, this story here and kind of illustrate this point. So we know that the, the spooler service is, um, can have two possible states, really, just for the sake of argument. But now, what happens if we don't necessarily get that statement or if we don't get that state like we, we um, would expect? Well, the if, if else and else statements kind of provide a, a sequencing that we can follow. So let's say um, we know that the principal right now is running, um, but let's change this to maybe running. And in, you know, if you understand services, maybe running is, is not a viable option. So, so what do we have here? We'll go through and we'll, the first step in the if statement, we'll say if this service is equal to maybe running, um, 
execute the services running. That's on line four here, right? You can see here on line four. Else if, right, this is kind of a secondary statement. If the service is equal to stopped, then print this out. But we just started this service, as we can see here. So we know it's started, so we're probably not gonna get that. And then this is our catch-all. Else, which stands for if everything else fails, then write there is an error in the script. And it is generally pretty good, um, it's actually very good uh, kind of practice to have a catch-all statement. You don't want um, errors to go unhandled or conditions to go unhandled. You should know what you would expect from your scripts and then you should have some sort of final catch-all scenario that would um, return you some sort of error or write to some sort of log or send you an email if none of the conditions that you were expecting are met. So what happens if we write this, execute this script? See, now we get what we would expect. The else condition of the if, else if, and else goes through, goes through all the possibilities, and it says, hey, there's an error in the script. And in this particular case, this error is in the status code that my service is looking for. The maybe running is not a viable status, right? So now if we clear that up, and then we go back to the services running, we see that we now get the expected result from the script. So this is a little bit of a shorter lesson, but it's really, really important. And I, I want you to go through and, and again, just think about it and try to use if, else if, and else statements and think about how you would use them in your day-to-day -day life. Another example could be um, if I want some pizza, I could go to the store and buy a pizza. Um, maybe I don't like store-bought pizza. Maybe my else if would be if if uh, store-bought pizza is unappealing, I make my own pizza. And uh, the final else could be uh, maybe I'm allergic to tomatoes and so no pizza for you. Uh, so this is just, we use these types of programmatic um, logic statements every day in our lives. And so I think if you try to look at them that way, uh, it can be less intimidating when you're trying to write scripts and, and when you're trying to write programs. So if you have any questions, um, go through, read it a couple times. If and if else is pretty simple, but it is a fundamental building block to almost all scripts and all programs that you write. Uh, so I wanted to just give this its own dedicated lesson. And as you can see, it really does provide uh, a lot of logic and a lot of power behind the scripts that you'll need. So thank you again for watching this lesson here at Overworked Admin. If you like the content, please pick out the ads that our sponsors put in the videos. It helps keep the uh, videos going. And have a great day. Thanks and watch again here on overworkedadmin.com.